grow your practice, grow your wealth, grow your impact. Find out how to spend less time in the dental chair and more time on the things you love. Welcome back to the Dental Wealth Podcast. This week, what I want to do is I want to talk about Walgreens getting together with Aspen Dental. And and so I've had so many doctors reach out. I had to just comment on this because it's kind of my, almost at this point, I'm inundated with people asking me about this subject and I get messages on LinkedIn. And I've got clients reaching out to me and people want to know my thoughts. Now, interestingly enough, um, Aspen Dental has been doing the same strategy since they started the company. And what ends up happening is with a lot of private independent dentists is, is you kind of end up starting a business without a clear and focused strategy. And that's not what happened with Aspen Dental. I did tell you, you know, I, you don't need to worry about them and I'm gonna tell you why you don't need to worry about them. But I wanna go back first on that strategy and let's just talk about that. Now when Aspen Dental first came into the industry, if you think about it, I mean, Aspen Dental took a lot of DMOs and they took a lot of, I mean, they basically took every plan. And they came in the marketplace and they took all the patients in a sense that you did not want. They were willing to to take really low reimbursement to get patients in the door. And they always were willing to do that. And matter of fact, when they were doing that, you know, a, literally a decade ago, nobody cared. Because in a sense, they were up the street, but they weren't in your market space. And so it wasn't a concern about what they were doing. And you said, hey, they take all those other plans. And you looked at them in a different light. Well, you still should. But I think you need to understand that it goes back down to business strategy. Aspen Dental has had the exact same business strategy since the beginning. And if you study business strategy at all, and matter of fact, I think it's something that every business owner, whether you're a dentist or not, should study, by the way. But if you study business strategy and understand competitive strategy, you understand that there is a model within competitive strategy that talks about cost leadership. And the idea of cost leadership versus, for instance, a differentiation strategy and what ends up happening is you come in the marketplace and you try to be the low cost provider. You try to be the low cost provider, get a lot of revenue coming in from being the low cost provider. And then what you try to do is over time create what we call in business economies of scale. And that means you've used this business model to create enough strength where you can buy supplies and other goods at a discounted margin, right? So it doesn't cost you as much for supplies. And it doesn't cost you for a lot of things as well. So that they can use, because they have such a large purchasing power, that they can focus on being the low cost provider in the marketplace, which is why they're ending up at a pharmacy. Because if you start thinking about that for a moment, they're at a pharmacy because they're still going after their focus, which is cost leadership. They want the patient who's okay going to the drugstore and getting a root canal or getting a procedure done. And they're okay with that. They're okay being the cheapest provider in the marketplace. By the way, that's where they've always been. What great organizations do, and I'll give them some credit, they haven't changed their strategy. It's just that their strategy is working into the point where it's become more mainstream and you're starting to notice it more. And you start thinking about what they end up doing, and we could talk about their entire strategy for five days, but I want you to understand that it's not your strategy and it shouldn't be. Now, if it is your strategy, if you're listening to this thinking, hey, well, I'm going to go be the low-cost provider, let me tell you why that's a losing proposition. That's a losing proposition because you can always be beat on price. Matter of fact, I will say that differently you will always be beat on price. There will always be somebody who can do it cheaper. Very important concept for you to understand is that somebody can always beat you. So let me give you an example of that. So there's a little store um, in the United States called Kmart. And Kmart was in the marketplace, the big behemoth when it came to retail. And they had something called the blue light special and the blue light special was the big sale they had and it got more people coming to their stores which by the way is a different type of strategy 
but that's understanding business strategy. So they, they, they were the low cost provider. And then there's this gentleman out of Arkansas, his name was Sam Walton. And he said, I bet that I can beat them if I get really, really good at supply chain management. And he did. And Walmart became the mega blockbuster retail store in the entire world because they understood supply chain management. And then for the last 20, 30 years, we've been saying nobody, nobody can knock Walmart off until Jeff Bezos and Amazon came along. See, the problem with being the low cost provider is somebody is always willing to do it cheaper. You do not want to be the low cost provider in the marketplace. And in fact, I'll go as far as saying, if you try to compete on price, you're going to lose. Let me make sure I make that clear. If you're going to compete on price, you're going to lose. And Aspen Dental has economies of scale. They get higher reimbursement. When you can buy supplies cheaper and you get higher reimbursement, I'm telling you flat out with the marketing power they have, you're going to lose in that model. That's not a model you want to be in. You don't want to be the low cost provider in the marketplace. You want to be the differentiator. You want to disrupt. You want to own market share. I'm telling you that they're nothing to worry about that they are going after their percentage of the market. They know exactly who they're going after. They've been targeting the same group since the beginning of the company, and they don't plan on changing that. Now, could they change it over time? Of course they could. They, they, businesses change strategy all the time. But if you go back and look at that, they're fighting for what we call the cost leadership. Now, when I do workshops on this, we, we can talk about advanced complex business strategy. But I would tell you that you need to understand business strategy and understand for you to compete in your market space and you to disrupt and dominate, you need to create the value add. You need to create the differentiator. When you go after differentiation in a marketplace, that's not where they're hanging out at. They're not hanging out there. And if you're listening, thinking, well, I'm going to try to compete in the same space as Aspen. And in fact, if insurance is your biggest concern, you're probably thinking about this all wrong. Aspen Dental isn't your competition. In a sense, you are. You've got to differentiate your model and you've got to find out how to differentiate you in the marketplace. And by the way, in dentistry, it's so easy to differentiate your model. It's so easy to differentiate your model in dentistry. So I would urge you, if you see these things on Aspen Dental and you see this in the marketplace and you start thinking to yourself, hey, this is something I really got to worry about. It's really not. And there's so much time and energy thought about what they're doing. You don't see, I mean, if we actually go to market dominance and start thinking about it, right? You don't see the Ritz Carlton chasing right? The Motel 6, right? <laughs> I mean, you don't need to go and change and focus after the person who can do it cheaper. And you don't need to worry about just because they might be bigger in your marketplace. The truth is, if you understand differentiation strategy and you understand how to accomplish and utilize differentiation strategy, and you know how to create the value add for your patients and you do it consistently with the right culture, then you have nothing to worry about at all. There's an abundance of patience and there's an abundance of opportunity and you got to target where you need to put your energy. So I would encourage you that if you're looking at this, worrying about your industry and worrying about your profession, don't, it's not needed. They have a cost leadership mark strategy. You know, I, I imagine if you took the executives from Nordstrom's right? And you set them outside of Walmart for the day, right? They'd see all the foot traffic. <laughs> and then if you took the opposite side, Walmart, and you put them in front of Nordstrom's and you saw the foot traffic difference, then you would start thinking to yourself, I mean, both of those executives would have an uncomfortable feeling for different reasons because they're different models. They can both be successful. Both companies are extremely successful. Both companies have done well. Both have dominated in the marketplace. You don't need to change and go after the Walmarts and try to be Walmart. 
You need to go after and try to be Nordstrom's. You need to differentiate in your marketplace. When you learn how to truly differentiate in your marketplace, then and only then do you get to control price. When you get to control price, then there's all types of opportunities that are available to you. It's also when you get to that place, you can give so much more to your patients. You can give so much more to your team. You can give so much more to your family. Right? You can give so much more back when you create that type of practice. And that's the practice I would urge you to, to have, maintain, keep. That's what's going to keep dentistry in the hands of dentists. That's what's going to help dental industry thrive is making sure we don't chase after the lowest cost provider. But we make sure patient care comes first. We make sure that culture comes first. We make sure we take after the take care of the people that support us and we differentiate in the marketplace. And we let Walmart be Walmart. We let Aspen Dental be Aspen Dental. And we differentiate. When you do that, when you understand differentiate stra stra differentiation strategy, you understand you don't need to worry about them. Worry about your doors. And you'll take care of the rest. I appreciate you listening this week. Listen, if you've enjoyed this and you enjoy the Dental Wealth Podcast, hit subscribe. Uh, we'd love to have you as an audience, and uh, we, you know, we put out content every week. Uh, we want you to be part of our, our community and uh, hear our message. And so I uh, hope this has been helpful. hope you have a great week, and we'll look forward to talking to you soon.